Hi, I'm Jason Mears and this is Google Cloud VMware Engine 103. What benefits could it provide? So at the end of the last video we talked a little bit about cloud first and cloud appropriate and how um, it's possible that if cloud first is just a, a catchphrase or a, um, you know um, um, uh, just a term that you use to describe things rather than an actual strategy um, one of the one of the things that can happen is um, you can end up you know going from a model which simplifies things to a model which massively makes things more complex and more difficult to manage uh, one of the things that I've mentioned in other videos is uh, the, this complexity and duplication is a problem but in my mind a bigger issue is those firewalls it's the fact that you've got different ways of doing firewalls and security and authentication and multiple places to change things at once because I think most people struggle already with security and firewalls and firewall rules in a, in a small organization and when you bring in multiple places to do it multiple different tools and different skills I think that's going to be one of the problems that people have in a in a multi cloud world so the theme of this really is that you know one of the problems here is duplication um, uh, duplication 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 um, and if you look on the right hand side with VMware vSphere we've got a set of things under that private cloud these are the things that I think you need in order to run a cloud environment properly so you know starting in the bottom left hand corner we've got a, a standardized or a sensible way of doing compute storage networking and security we've got a, a standardized way that we do applications and containers and container management maybe through something like Kubernetes on the top row we've got things like health risk efficiency and waste uh, we then got things like automation and blueprints, things like application traffic analysis and mapping, things like cost, cost comparison and what if uh, analysis, and then things like login and correlation. So they're most things that most people running a reasonably large vSphere environment have already got in place, um, and they're probably using something like VMware Cloud Foundation or VCF to do that. If we're going to take on another public cloud and we're going to do it in the native style of that cloud, the chances are we're going to bring on exactly the same set of tools again, but in a different format or a different version. So they all achieve the same thing, but it's a new set of tools that duplicate the tools we've already got. And for every cloud that we bring on, we're going to do more duplication of those tools and more duplication of those tools. We're also going to have some things to consider, like if we've got backups that are in for a VMware platform in a, in a VMware format, um, are we going to start having to make other sets of backups which are now in a Amazon um, style format uh, and an Amazon backup and then maybe Google and Microsoft as well so I'm, I might end up having multiple different ways of doing backups um, and one thing I've discussed uh, with, with one of my customers in my day job is the fact that they'd closed a, um, a data center down or they had plans to close a data center down and move it to a public cloud and then realized that if they ever needed to restore these backups because the first site was down, the second site is now gone and they don't have anywhere that's compatible with the backups to be restored. So although we've moved one data center and shut one down, if the reason for restoring the backup is that the first one's down, we've essentially got nowhere to restore a backup to. And that's the same for every platform or every new platform that we take on. We've got to consider not only the backups, but how we're actually going to do a restoration. And bear in mind, some of these restores are going to be done across a wide area network or an internet connection, not a high speed LAN. Uh, but the biggest problem in my mind is, is staff, skills and training and tools. Um, so I've got a set of staff who, with skills on the platform I use now um, and they've got a set of tools that they're familiar with and it may be that I need to add more staff or more tools or more skills if I take on another platform and the same again for every additional platform that I take on. So hence the reason for the title of this slide being duplication, duplication, duplication. They all achieve the same thing but with a different set of tools or in a different format and I could end up just making things worse. Um, by you know doing it a certain way you're trying to get into public cloud there's nothing wrong with trying to go to public cloud but um, I could actually end up increasing complexity and increasing the number of staff or skills or tools that I need when I get there so that slide I had about managing cloud foundation um, all the things on that slide um, that make managing a public cloud easy the things that you've probably already got if you're a VMware house just gonna simplify that a little bit and say essentially what that layer in the middle is doing 
is it's providing a consistent infrastructure so I can throw in infrastructure at the bottom whether that's physical servers in my own data center or whether that's uh, compute storage and networking from a cloud provider and the idea is that if I've got a consistent infrastructure I don't need to care too much about um, what that infrastructure is or where it's coming from it's just something to consume on my cloud platform and then I can spend my time focusing more on things like compute storage networking security virtual machines containers and applications but I've got a single view of the world even though it's across multiple data centers and multiple providers so in essence what I'm really looking for is simplification and again use that same thing before that you know this is probably on-premise and capex that's most, most likely public cloud and opex um, but I can now move my focus, especially if I'm having to reduce my costs and have a smaller IT department, I can focus on delivering applications and services rather than infrastructure, and hopefully that will lead to a better user experience for staff and for customers. So they're all good reasons and good um, good things that happen uh, when you create a hybrid cloud with VMware Cloud Foundation and Google Cloud VMware Engine, but none of those are the thing that I think that delivers the most benefit. They're all good. Uh, they all stop um, duplication. Um, but the thing that I think probably lots of organizations are missing is that we've got an opportunity here to use our existing data sources for new applications. So just to set the scene on that, if I've got my VMware vSphere environment on-prem and I've got my Google Cloud VMware engine in the public cloud all running that VMware Cloud Foundation software I now have a single platform that spans private cloud and hybrid cloud for my workloads and virtual machines but not forgetting that although I've, I've extended my data center and my platform into the hybrid cloud I'm not actually using any public cloud services or features here so not forgetting that we've got all the good stuff in Google native cloud um, what I've got the option of here is using public cloud services and functions and features um, alongside the hybrid cloud and the key thing here is that I've got adjacency so I've got virtual machines uh, running the VMware um, virtual machine file format that are right next to native Google Cloud services and if you remember on one of the previous slides one of the issues we had was all down to the fact that we didn't have adjacency that they were in a completely different geographical location so if we can fix that adjacency problem we can put the data that's already in our existing applications right next to all the native Google Cloud services so that means I can bring an application which might be 5, 10, 15, 20, maybe even 30 years old, and I can put it right next to other app, uh, other services in Google Cloud Platform. So it might be that um, I could do something clever with containers or functions. I could get a developer to look at writing um, you know, applications or services that can use uh, the data stored in, a, in an older application in a VM. So if you think about the fact that I could create a hybrid application that sources its data from a VM that's running in a Google data center um, and it's being accessed by a Google container or Google function, I've then got the ability to maybe create a, a new cloud native application or I might be able to put something like a web front end on an application that was designed before the internet was, was popular or it might be that I can do something like create a, a mobile application that runs on a phone or a tablet again using the data in that um, old application um, as a back end and I can even do things like um, use that data with something like artificial intelligence and machine learning so I might be able to get things like use AI and ML to gain customer insights or business insights or look at that data in ways that I hadn't considered before so I guess what I'm saying here that adjacency to a native public cloud gives you some options to create a hybrid application and get the value out of an application or a service that um, may be an older one that might not even be supported by a vendor anymore but there's a rich source of data that could be used with modern cloud native applications or mobile applications and AI and ML so that's where I think the real benefit of using Google Cloud VMware Engine is it's the ability to leverage the existing GCP services so again if you want to know more about VCF or VMware Cloud Foundation uh, I've got a video which is Public Cloud for VMware Users 105, VMware Cloud Foundation, VCF. If you'd like to know more about uh, virtual machines, containers and functions, 
um, and the, what the suitability of those for different types of application and the platforms that they run on. Again, I've got another video called Public Cloud for VMware Users 103, which is workloads. Um, and if you want to know more about the different services that are in GCP natively, um, I've got another video called Public Cloud for VMware Users 104, Public Cloud Offerings. And if you want to know more about things like artificial intelligence and machine learning and how you can use existing data sets or even feed it things like uh, media and content and it can do analysis of media and content with AI and machine learning. Um, there's another video you can watch which is public cloud for VMware users one or two, compute and services. So the takeaway for this is that Google Cloud VMware Engine as part of a VMware hybrid cloud could allow you to use public cloud adjacency to create new cloud native applications or mobile applications that combine existing applications and data sources with modern development tools and modern cloud services, including AI and ML. And I guess the question here is, what could AI and ML do with all of your existing data that's stored in traditional applications? And certainly for some of the people I work with on a day-to-day -day basis, they're using applications where the vendor doesn't exist anymore. So there's no way that that application can be updated or modified, um, but it is a rich source of information that's been gathered over years and years. So the takeaway is just, you know, kind of there's other ways of doing this, and it might be that you can build a hybrid app using the best of modern technologies and the, uh, the wealth of existing data you already have in traditional or legacy applications. So thank you very much for your time, and I hope you found that useful.